Well, here we go. This is just going to be a little demonstration in setting up our trig problems here. And um, we'll do a few problems after this one that are take it to conclusion. Remember, we could have we could be given the length of a side, the apothem, or the radius in our regular polygons, solving for the area, of course. And we of course need to know the number of sides. So let's focus on this triangle. I'm going to call it ABR, like that. And it's, we're just expanding this triangle, and we've talked about this before. A is, the, a is the apothem. R is the radius. Now, I chose B um, instead of saying S over 2. This represents half a side. But it makes sense here if I, I'm used to ABC, so now I've got ABR for my triangle. Work with me on this. I think you'll like it. So we know in this case, because 10 sides, this angle is going to be 18. We already explained why. Remember, it's different for a different number of sides. So all we have to do is focus on this triangle. And we have three identities. We know, and again, in the case of a decagon, um, the sine of 18 is opposite over hypotenuse, and our ka, and our toa, for soka toa. So we've got to see which one, and we're going to do these one case at a time. So um, let's start with this case. I know the length of a side. The length of the side is 10 meters. So right away, I'm going to replace this with, aha, uh -huh, not 10, but 5. Now when I'm solving for the area, I need perimeter and apothem. I don't need the radius. So this is totally unnecessary. And so I'm not going to solve, I'm not going to waste any time solving for radius. So I know this and I need this. That's going to be sufficient to tell me which trig functions. If you're talking about colors, which of these ratios has blue and green? And of course, that's our good old tangent function. Now we can ditch these two because they're useless to us in this particular problem. And we know that the tangent of this case, 18, is the opposite over the adjacent. So let's set this one up. And again, um, I already know my perimeter because I know I've got 10 sides, each 10 meters each. So I'm going to have a perimeter of 100 meters. Now. I know that the tangent of 18, opposite 5 over adjacent A, I'm solving for the A. In this case, I'm going to switch these around. We know that with our, with our means extremes that we can switch the A and the tangent of 18. So now I have an expression for perimeter and uh, for the apothem. All right, let's, what, let's suppose we start with the apothem next. Well, let's move on to the second case. Let's suppose I know that the apothem of the figure has, say, a measure of 10. So let's see what we do here. Going back to my reference triangle, I'm going to replace the green segment, the apothem, with the 10. And I still know that this is 18 degrees. I'm looking at my trig functions and saying, what do I need to know? Well, for the area, I do need apothem and perimeter. Well, the apothem is a piece of cake because I've given it's 10. Again, I don't need that radius. I do need B. And once again, sine, useless. Cosine, useless. The tangent is going to relate B to my apothem. So let's start setting it up. I need the room over here. And I want to say that the tangent of 18 is equal to b over 10. Straightforward. Now, uh, in this case, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 10. So b is 10 tangent 18. Now, this is where you can get in trouble because we don't need b. We don't need b at all. We need perimeter. Remember, 2b is your side. And then, in this case, with 10 sides, 200 tangent 18. That's your perimeter. So there's your perimeter. There's your apothem. Next case. 
And now one more case, one last case. This one's actually the most work. And that's what happens if you are given the radius of your regular polygon. Now the radius means, well, if you go back to your figure here, this means that you're going to have to solve for two things. Because remember, we need the apothem and we need the perimeter. The B is a component in the perimeter. So you're going to have to solve two of them. Now the only thing you don't need now is the tangent. Because the tangent just relates these two, so let's get rid of that. You're going to have to make two calculations. So here we go. Let's go one at a time. I want to, I want to take the sine of 18 opposite over the hypotenuse. And then, of course, you see what, where this goes. Again, multiplying both sides of the equation by 10. This is looking familiar. You're remembering, say, hey, that's not the side, that's B. And if I wanted to know the side, I would have to double it. And then I could take that side and multiply times 10. Of course, it could go directly from here to here by uh, multiplying by 2n. In this case, that would be 20. And there we go. My perimeter is 200 sine 18. So we've got a perimeter. All we need is an apothem. So let's go for the apothem. And apothem is adjacent. I like that, that A is apothem and A is adjacent. Adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine 18, A over 10. And all we've got to do on this one is multiply both sides by 10, and there you go. That A is 10 times the cosine of 18, and perimeter is 200 times the sine of 18. And there you have it. That's all that you got to do to lay out the trig. We're going to work three sample problems next. And in those sample problems, we'll take it to, well, to conclusion and, and uh, round to nearest tenths and all that stuff. But make sure you've got this trig down. And I can't stress enough, use this little triangle here, the A, B, and the R. Let's go. Okay, here we go with exercise 19. We're going to solve for the area and we'll get the intermediate um, perimeter. This, from this position where we are given the radius of the polygon. So um, there's several ways things we could be given. We could be given the apothem, we could be given a side, we could be given a radius. So we'll go with the radius first. Uh, exercise 19. Again, we start with the central angle. You recognize the octagon with a 45 degree central angle. And right away we split that in half and we say, aha, well that means a 22 and a half degree angle. If I'm going to go with this triangle, the right triangle formed with the apothem and the radius. You now you could just take um, the regular 360 and divide by 2n and come directly to the 22.5. But I want you to know where it comes from. Now, we're going to, oh, let's just say that we do some trig exercises here. We know that our angle is here, and we know that for our apothem, our adjacent over our hypotenuse is the cosine. So cosine of 22 is a apothem over 20, or in other words, apothem is 20 times cosine of 22 and a half. Easy enough. And let's see, for what I'll call the half side, and I like to use the variable b there, since we're already using a for apothem, let's use b for this, which is really just the half side. And again, in this case, from this angle, opposite over hypotenuse would be sine. So I've got these two trig expressions here, and um, well, I guess it's time to do some, uh, well, we could simplify this. The perimeter we know is going to be eight sides, and this two of these b's make one side, so eight times two, or 16 of whatever this expression is, 20 times sine of 22 and a half, yikes. So, um, well, let's get to it. We'll do this perimeter, and we'll do all this with the calculator. So, you should take it this far, and then let's, let's get it done. Oh, and by the way, we're, um, we'll, sub, we'll just write it in there, and we're going to say perimeter. Hmm. 
well, I'm going to say 22.5. I'll take the sine of that and I'll multiply times 320. Times 320. And I may jot that number down, uh, 122. If I, let's say I jot down 122.5. Um, but I still keep all those numbers in the register because I really, really don't want to introduce a rounding error. And then I'm going to multiply that times, or better yet, let's put this into the memory. So you see I can do the memory there. Now I can clear the calculator. And let's see what, what else we can do here. Let's find the apothem. The apothem is simply 20. Now we'll go for we'll go a different direction here. We'll go 20 times. Neat thing, this calculator does no order of operations. 22.5 cosine. That's 20, that's the cosine of 22 and a half. If I hit the equal sign, that's 20 times that. So about 18.5. So I'm going to over here, I'm going to put in my 18.5. But remember, I kept all those numbers in the register of the calculator. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to multiply times, and what is that? It's in my memory. So I'm carrying all those extra digits, and there we go. Um, well, that's apothem times perimeter, and let's divide by 2. And that's what we have, 11.31. 0.4 to the nearest tenth or 37 to the nearest hundredth and I don't see any units here so let's just go to the nearest tenth so we'll say 1131.4 and we will from there we will call it good well, exercise 20 will be slightly easier than the last one. See, you're given the apothem here. Last time you had to solve for the apothem and the side. Here, you've only got to solve for what we're calling B. And we already know that in a regular pentagon, we've seen this example, half the central angle and the isosceles triangle is 36. So let's just go with that. And we know that the area is 1 half AP. Apothem times perimeter. Perimeter can also be expressed as ns, number of sides, um, times the length of the side. So let's just get right to the trig. Easy squeezy here. We've got 36 degrees. It looks to me like opposite over adjacent. That to me is sounds like we are going the route of tangent. So again, this is just my substitution. I know solving on the side here for this what I call B. Um, tangent of 36 is B over 4.1. I can straighten that out. I'll multiply both sides of the equation by 4 and 1 tenth. Now substituting back into this equation, watch what I do here. I'm just going to put this into this equation. You say, whoa, 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 was that 41? Well, the, the 41 is, that's 5 times S. Remember, B is just half of S. So I've got to multiply that times 2 just to get a full side times 5. Let's just multiply it by 10. Move the decimal point one place. So 4.1 becomes 41. So if I've got that, I'm going to bust out the calculator and let's get this thing done. And very straightforward. And this problem, oh, they want the perimeter. Duh. So okay, so let's we'll do this part of the equation first then. So I'll just say 41 times tangent of 36, 36 tangent, that's the tangent of 36, equals. So I could write that down. You can jot that down if you'd like somewhere. It's, um, I didn't leave a spot for it, uh, 29 and 8 tenths to the nearest tenth. That would be the perimeter. But now we're going to leave all those uh, digits in the calculator. We'll multiply times 4.1. So that's the perimeter times the apothem, but then I've got to take half of that, divide by 2, and you can see about 61 and let's say 1 tenth. So we're, we are done with this one. 
Well, let's finish out this trilogy of exercises, of practice exercises, with a regular polygon where we know the side length. Our good old friend, the heptagon, we've got seven sides of nine, so that gives us a perimeter of 63. Well, that's the good news. The bad news is it gives us a very ugly measure for an angle here. And again, this is the angle formed between the apothem and the radius, which is half that central angle. Um, I wrote it here to four decimal places, but um, oof, it's not pretty. So let's just go to our calculator and get that ready. Oh, wait a minute. We have to do this first. We have to set up our trig. The tangent of this angle, 27 or 25.7, is equal to the opposite, four and a half over the adjacent, which happens to also be an A for apothem. So that's a good thing about that lettering scheme. Rearranging, a is equal to 4.5 divided by uh, that tangent. So let's go to town on this. We've got, uh, let's say, 4.5, 5 divided by, uh, let's say, 25, and I'll put in a few just for good measure. 1, 4, 3 tangent, so that's the tangent of my 25 degree angle, and equals, and there I've got, it looks like to the nearest tenth, nine and three tenths. So we'll go with the area would be nine and three tenths. Wait a minute, that's crazy. That's, that's the apothem. Let's fix that. I almost fell for that. The apothem is 9.3. We're not done yet. Let's keep this one going. The apothem is 9.3, so I'm going to multiply that times 63, and then I'll divide by 2. And you can see in this case the area of this figure is 294 and 3 tenths. So the area, 294 and 3 tenths. And that's more like it. Okay, let's go get them.